and welcome to worship on this, I guess it's the, thir- it's the second, the, which Sunday isn't it? Pentecost? It's the 13th Sunday in the season of Pentecost already. Time flies, and it's already the third Sunday in August. My goodness, how does that happen? Um, we're so glad to welcome you all here today. Uh, we especially welcome our friends from First Baptist Church as we continue our shared summer worship services. Those who are worshiping with us for the first time or who are joining us for the summer and those who are worshiping with us online. Just a reminder that our coffee hour and church school will not start again until September 15th as we, our hardworking volunteers, have a bit of a break for the summer. However, our Sunday supper will be served as usual next Sunday in partnership with First Baptist and St. Paul's Anglican churches. And so that's August 25th from 2.30 to 4.30 here in our church hall. Um, Please see the schedule of worship for the rest of the summer months, and we hope you will be able to join us as you continue to enjoy your summer, uh, even with having to carry an umbrella with you more often than not. um, (laughs) Please save up all your stories, pictures, and jokes for the Challenge newsletter, which is our local church newsletter. Uh, Looking further ahead, I will be away on September 1st, leading worship at Riverview Presbyterian Church as the newly appointed interim moderator. Uh, Members of the session will be leading the worship service at First Presbyterian Church that Sunday, so please do come and join us. And I encourage you to check our bulletin, our website, and our social media accounts for the latest on what's happening here at First Presbyterian Church. I now invite you to join with me as we open our service with the call to worship, which you will find in your order of service, and we will read it responsibly. Praise God. Give thanks to God from your heart. Great are the works of our God, and we delight in them. Yes, the works of God's hands are faithful and just. Holy and awesome is God's name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We honor God's name so that God's praise may endure forever. Our opening hymn is found in your order of service, number 776, Jesus, Life of All the World. And you're always invited to either stand or remain seated for the singing of all of our hymns.
now I invite you to join with me in the prayer as we approach God, which is in your order of service, and we will read it responsively. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, when our souls hunger for fulfillment, you give us the bread of life. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, when our souls thirst for communion with you, you refresh us with living water. Creator, Christ, and Spirit, when we, when we long for what is authentic, you show us the way, the truth, and the life. And so we come to worship you, Creator, Christ, and Spirit. Receive our praise and gratitude, living God, for you are the source of all that matters and the strength to live out your purposes now and evermore. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite you to join with me in continuing our prayers as we join together in the prayer of confession, which is in the order of service. God of all that matters, forgive us when we forget what matters to you. Forgive the sins we have tried to hide and those we were once proud to commit. Forgive the sins we have done to please ourselves and the sins we have done to please others. By your grace, forgive us and bless what we can become through your faithfulness to us. Amen. Friends in Christ, all things are made new. Know that you are forgiven by his great mercy. Trust in that mercy and have the courage to forgive yourselves and to forgive each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I mentioned to the church at St. Paul's on Friday, this, earlier this morning, um, usually I either do a children's message or a mission moment here. We don't have any chronological children here, but we are all children of God. And so actually I wanted to share with you a, a little, what, a little revis, revised version of the, what the children's message was going to be for this morning, which is to sing and give thanks. So as many of you know, this is our hymnal. And many of the hymns that we sing during church services are in this book. Now our friends at First Baptist have their own hymnal, and I've sung out of many hymns out of that book as well. A lot of them are the same. Um, if you look in the hymn book, you can see, for example, that number 373 is always a favorite, Jesus Loves Me. Uh, number 154 is another children's and favorite of children, young and old, Silent Night. And the hymn book is an important book for the church because, and it makes me think of our lesson today that we'll, I'll be reading for you, or that Don will be reading for you from our letter to the Ephesians, which we've been working our way through all summer, all uh, this is the month of August. It tells us to sing and to make music to the Lord in our hearts and to always give thanks to God for everything. When I was young, my mother used to sing. She wasn't a very good singer, at least I didn't think she was, but she was always singing or humming or listening to music. And, you know, she was a, a woman of very deep faith. Uh, she, most of the things she liked to hum or she liked to listen to were songs that I heard in church when I was young. And they always made me feel good. And when my mother um, tucked me in bed at night, we always said our prayers. And when, and then she would pray as well. And when she prayed, she always told us to give thanks to God for all that had happened in that day. And my mother was a person whose life was a prayer. She served people, she loved people, and she was always a person who was very involved in her church. And this was even though her life was not by any means easy. She lost her parents when she was very young. Um, she got divorced after 25 years of marriage and had to, had to raise at least three of us on her own. And yet, she was always grateful and thankful to God for everything that happened every day. I even asked her once about whether she was ever sorry that she married my dad and she said no absolutely not because if I hadn't met your married your dad I would have never had you so for that I give thanks so you see this is an example about how she was always grateful to God for everything and I think that was one of the ways that I've learned 
to realize that our lives, not just what we do here on a Sunday morning, but our lives every day, we can live as a prayer to God. Uh, there was a, a medieval monk named Brother Lawrence, and he practiced the presence of God. Everything he did, he did as he thought of God and prayed for God, he, whether he was washing the dishes, whether he was at Mass, whether he was working in the garden. Everything he did, he did because he was doing it for God. So I think that's what our uh, scripture lesson that we'll hear from Don later this morning talks about. The next time we sing a hymn, why don't we remember that we're praising and thanking God or whatever actions you take during this week. Think of them as a way of praising and thanking God. When you hear other people sing a hymn or pray to God, they are thankful for God's love too. And when you sing or pray to God, that's what you're doing as well and when, what you're doing in your everyday living. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for music and prayer, which lifts our hearts and helps us to give thanks and to praise you for all that you do for us each day. Help us to live our lives so that other people will see us as a prayer to you. Amen. Our next hymn is number 637, if you're using the hymn book, but the words are also in your order of service, which are, take my life and let it be, let it, let it be consecrated all for thee. So this is kind of a reflection of what I was just talking about. Let God take our lives and let them be consecrated for God's glory. Let us sing together. Please be seated, and I now welcome Don Everson to the pulpit to read our psalm and our scripture lesson for today. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, quiet all that distracts us, and prepare us to listen for your word speaking through the scriptures. <clears throat> when we learn how best to follow you in the example of Christ, your living word. 
Amen. We will read responsibly Psalm 34, verses 9 to 14. O fear the Lord, you holy ones, for those who fear God have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. And do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Our second reading is from Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. <clears throat> Make the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit speaking to, another, to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of God in Scripture, for the God, word of God within us, and for the word of God around us. Thanks, thanks be to God. choir and Kathleen that's a great example of singing and making music to God in our hearts and giving glory to God's name let us pray may the message that you have to bring to those who are gathered to me here today may it come through me or if need be in spite of me for Jesus sake
In keeping with exploring the themes from the letter of, of the Ephesians that we've been working our way through this month of August, today's theme, to live wisely, according to Ephesians 5, 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. And that's what we just heard Don read for us this morning. Friends, we live in an amazing era. We are surrounded by more information than at any time in our history, literally at our fingertips. I could just type on this computer, open a Google search, and find something that I'm looking for. I remember the days when you used to look stuff up in the encyclopedia. You don't need to do that now. You look it up online. And there's virtually nothing that we can't find on the internet. I know I am blessed with having so many wonderful resources as I prepare my messages for you each Sunday. And they're all available at the touch of a button. But at the same time, a steady stream of information bombards us each day. Like water from a fire hose, information overwhelms and numbs us. Do we have the wisdom to discern which of this input, this information, is correct and truthful? Especially that information we see on our social media feeds. And does this plethora of information bring us any closer to God or to God's design or intention for our lives? Are we humbler? Are we learning anything about the way life really works? As one observer notes, we are in a wisdom famine. Our secular world doesn't seem to put much value on wisdom, does it? Really, when you talk to people, whoever says, oh, I want to be wise, I want to be wise. Nope. We want to be right, we want to be rich, we want to be famous, we want to be popular, we want to be in control. But wise? Hmm, nah. Not really. And part of our challenge in inquiring a wisdom is that there's a big, as I mentioned, there's a big difference between wisdom and information. It's easy to get information, but wisdom is like learning a skill where you develop muscle memory. And that's what athletes and musicians strive to achieve in their many hours of practice. But that muscle memory doesn't happen overnight. It must be learned and developed over time, like wisdom, through thoughtful repetition and discernment. The wisdom that helps us find a Christ-centered way of life must be cultivated. And the writers of the Hebrew Bible called it the fear of the Lord. But when we think of fear, we think, well, it only goes only so far to motivate us when the one we fear is not looking, like our parents when we were kids, we tend to do whatever we please. We'll put our hand in that candy jar when our parents aren't looking. But the fear of the Lord is not that kind of fear. Because our psalm for today gives us some guidance in discerning what is meant by the fear of the Lord. And if you go back to your bulletin, you can see it where it says that, um, that God, the psalm tells us how good it is to fear the Lord, but at the same time, it also tells us what we need to do to show how we must act to fear or respect or honor the Lord. So it says, Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Practicing the fear of the Lord requires us to control our words, 
and what we say and what we read and what we see on the internet and use those words for good, not for evil. And when one looks at what practicing the fear of the Lord looks like in daily life, I think Jesus is the best example we could have. Because Jesus is a one who lived his whole life in reverence and honor and obedience to God. The Westminster Shorter Catechism, which is one of the creeds of the Reformed tradition, calls on us to glorify the Lord. And Jesus glorified the Lord through his earthly life and ministry. And that was shown in his wisdom, in his words, in his action, and ultimately in his sacrifice on the cross. In today's information age, while there's lots of words, more words than we can count, there is a diminishing value placed on those words. While what we say is important, our words are not enough. Spoken words, even a confession of faith that we might repeat every Sunday, mean nothing without wise and considered actions to back them up. And Ephesians 5 verse 15 reminds us to be very careful then how you live, not as wise, but unwise. And our psalm says the same thing when it says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. There's no references to information. But it's just how we should glorify God through wise living and actions. Information is fast. It's loud. It's superficial. And it can numb our hear ears and our minds. Very often we can't get away from it unless we turn off our TVs and our phones or whatever. But wisdom is slower and deeper and it's more lasting, but it's also more elusive. We can begin to make our way towards wisdom by clearing out the data smog that surrounds us every day by maybe taking an hour or so to fast from watching the TV or getting on our computers or cell phones. Long enough to talk to a friend face to face, read a book, or simply sit still and listen. Listen for that voice of God's wisdom. Over and over again, the Bible tells us that those who are foolish blatantly do that which leads to their own demise. But the way of wisdom, on the other hand, is a way of life filled with the Holy Spirit, bearing the fruit of the Spirit, serving in the strength the Spirit provides and adopting the attitudes inspired by the Spirit, attitudes of joy and gratitude and humility. It is a way of life that is defined by the grace and mercy that we extend to others because of the, our experience with God's generous grace and mercy it's a way of life that's defined by following jesus example of selfless love and sacrificial service to others it is a way of life that is truly meaningful and a way that glorifies god call it what you will the fear of the lord the way of wisdom following Jesus in discipleship, the life of the Spirit. That is where true meaning is found in life, and that is where we find wisdom. And that wisdom is found by living a life of loving God and loving and serving others. And it is in this age of information overload that this way of living glorifies God and helps prevent Wisdom, famine. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord and lover, source of beauty and depth of passion. 
Strengthen and inspire us to do the word we hear read and proclaimed and live in wisdom and following the faith that we confess and the example that you set for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is number 434, For the Beauty of the Earth, and it's in your order of service and in the hymn book. Let us sing together. Please be seated. And now I invite you to join with me in the prayers of the people, which you'll find again in your order of service, followed by the Lord's Prayer and the choral Amen. So let us come to the God that is the God of all wisdom, all love, and all grace, with our concerns, our cares, our joys, and our sorrows. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for your presence with us in all things especially in times of challenge and change. We thank you for times of rest and reunion this summer, for opportunities to see people we miss and places that inspire us with wonder. Yet we know the summer holds deep challenges for many, so we bring before you people and places on our minds and hearts. We pray for the families and communities facing fire, flood, or storms, worrying about what will remain of their homes and hometowns. Protect those who fight fires or conduct rescues in dangerous circumstances. Open our hearts in generosity to do what we can to assist recovery. We also pray for families and communities that are suffering because of war, violence, and persecution, remembering especially the people of Gaza, Afghanistan, Syria, Ukraine, Sudan, and Myanmar. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth, for the land and the sea suffering as the climate warms, and for the creatures being displaced by disaster and disruption. Protect all creation 
as we know it is precious to you and open our hearts to live more responsibly within the balance of life you created. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for people facing hatred and discrimination and those coming to terms with historic injustice and injury. God, we ask you to guide the relations between Indigenous peoples and people of colour and other Canadians, to correct misunderstandings and create justice for all communities. Open our hearts to discover what we share as your peoples and appreciate the gifts we have to offer to each other. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are suffering this summer, those who face pain or illness, those who are dying or who know bereavement, all who are anxious about what lies ahead and those who do not have enough to make ends meet. Bring courage and comfort to those who are struggling and open our hearts to offer companionship to ease their journey. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. In silence now, we hold before you those near and dear to us. O oh Lord, speak to us the truth we need to hear and guide us in our relationships. We ask you now to receive all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, as we offer the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Psalms urge us to give thanks to God at all times for everything God has provided. In gratitude, we offer God a portion of what God has given us. Trust that God will bless and multiply these our gifts to serve God's good purposes here and in places of deepest need. And for those who are visiting this morning, there are visitor envelopes in the pews if you'd like to use them, or there's also multiple ways you can give online. For the folks at First Baptist, use your envelopes and they will make sure that it gets to the First Baptist Treasurer. So Lord, thank you so much for all that you give to us, and we thank you for all that you give to our mission and ministry in this church and in our community as we continue to serve God. Let us sing now, praise God from whom all blessings flow, which is in the order of service. Loving God, we offer you our gifts today with thanksgiving, grateful for all that we have received in Christ and in creation. Bless these offerings and our lives so that we may live to bring you glory and share your love and wisdom with the world. Amen. And our closing hymn is number seven, or sending hymn is number 764. There's a spirit in the air and the words are in your order of service. Let us sing together.
friends, these are complex times. Look carefully how you walk, not stumbling along like fools, but as those who are wise with the wisdom of Christ. Wherever we go and whatever happens to us, we will give thanks to God, singing and giving joy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may that same grace, mercy, and peace from God, our loving parent, Jesus, the beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and our comforter, be with you today and always. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the postcode.